everybody, lecture number three about leadership. The subject is bravery, being brave. We know that if we talk or think about leader, we need to think how to be brave. We need to understand that without you being brave, uh, there is really no chance to lead people. Why is it like that? Because think about it for a second. When you as a leader want to help people to get to a better future, to a better life, you need to understand that you have to do something internally that you didn't do before. So every person have, I don't know, a bad habit or something or laziness that they have to overcome or stop lying. Whatever it is, you have to overcome whatever is scaring you. Now, you don't have to jump from an airplane or go fight with scorpion or snakes. I mean, that's nice. That's kind of breaking the bravery of the physicality. I'm talking about more the spiritual or the mental uh, side of your mind or your brain. That's really what I'm talking about. And that's the part that needs to be fixed. Because that's the part which is the core of who you are. Now, jumping from an airplane, it's very scary for some people. For some people, it's fun, adventure. So it's kind of cool, but it's still not breaking your real need to overcome the fear that you have inside. Some people who jump from an airplane still have a public speaking uh, uh, fear. Some people who are walking on fire still afraid to confront the wife or the husband. So bravery is to go after something that will lead you to help others. I repeat again, a true brave leader, they are brave not because they've just been announced as brave, they are brave because they actually went to a place that they do some change that affecting everybody else. That's what it's all about. And I'm going to give you an example, so we're all going to be on the same page. I'm choosing something that I found in uh, Google, and I found that Moses, David, Joshua, Noah, those people were brave. Now, if you talk about Moses, what he went through, the event, not just the physical event, think about it to lead people, lead people into the desert for 40 years, because you have certainty in God, certainty in the Creator, and you got to convince the people who stop believing in you that you're still the leader and you're still getting them into the land of milk and honey. While they're seeing the desert and the babies keep telling this mom, Mom, I thought I saw this mountain again. They're going in a circle 40 years. You're the leader of those things. Now, what does that mean to be brave in that moment? Think of you as Moses now. You are as Moses. So what make you now brave. What is about Moses to make him brave? And Moses was so humble, so he himself wrote the Torah. So when he wrote the Torah, you know, you don't even see that he's brave. You just see him as a kind leader, very, very nice, very humble, you know. But the idea of Moses going to Egypt, uh, negotiating with Pharaoh, doing all those things for what we call the famous verse from the Bible, let my people go. Now, if you want to become a leader and you have a follower and you want to get them out of slavery and that's your belief system, what brave move are you going to make to make sure that you can discover the best path for your family? That's a question, my friend. You have to ask yourself this type of question. Going to King David. King David bravery was in a war against Goliath. David, red hair. They say he had green, brown eyes. Not so big in his body. Won in the war somebody by the name of Goliath. Goliath was a giant. And we think that's by itself is bravery. But if you read the entire books of kings in the Bible, you'll find out that David did way more than that. But again, for his people, for his family. Moses, for his people, for his family. Many people say, I'm brave, I'm going to take a bullet for you. Don't take a bullet for anybody. That's not the point. Take a bullet is a term. But if you take a bullet, you only take a bullet one time. And then you cannot be saving those people again. You're saving them only from one bullet. What about the third bullet or the fourth or the fifth? 
So the idea is how do, are we creating a place, an atmosphere that the people who follow us will have a great life. And because of that, we got to find out bravery inside of us. I give another name now. I will give you Joshua, the wall of Jerich, Jericho. He went to war. He trusted. And because of it, people follow him into the land of Israel. If we talk about women, Judith, Judith Maccabee, who basically killed the head of the Greek empire. She seduced him to sexuality, fooled him, and then killed him. And because of that, she was able to get all the slaves out of the Greek empire. Yael, same story, almost the same thing. With the king, get him drunk, give him milk, and make sure to kill him. Now think about you in the tent, if you're a woman, <laughs> you're in a tent with a giant. You're in a tent with thousands of soldiers watching that tent. And you are alone with that guy who thinks that you fall in love with him or you're sexually attracted to him. And you have in mind one thing. How can I kill him? It's almost like the movie, uh, I think it's called Deer Hunter. No, no, it's called Apocalypse Now. You know, with Marlon Brando, if you remember that movie. When he's there, I don't remember the whole details of the story. But you're going into a place that you have no way to go back. But you're doing it for your people. So yes, you might die. But if you die, you know it will be better for your people. Um, all the people, whatever is in the Bible, Esther, Abigail, uh, Hannah, show an amazing story of bravery. So we need to break it down. We need, we need to bring it back into business. Now, you want to run a business, you want to run something. What are you afraid of? What is your insecurity? What is that you don't feel you're capable of doing? If there is something that you feel you're not capable of doing and you're not going for it, you have fear. The customer that will run into your business will always be afraid. Not of you. They will have fear. There is people in this world that have fear. All type of fears. You don't want those type of customers to come to you. I tell you why. Because if you have only customers who have fear all day long, you will have to be taking care of their personality. But they're not willing to change the fear. They're not willing to overcome the problem they have. So what they do? They're coming back to you for help. What do you do? You're helping them because they want to become a leader. And it's a vicious cycle. They never change. You're never able to change them. And it's a vicious cycle for one year. You feel good with the advice you gave them. They feel good that they are happy for one hour. And then next week they're coming back again with the same type of problem. You didn't lead them to a better life. Because you don't have yet a better life as a leader. As a leader, my dear friend, you have to go into a place where you are actually starting, starting to facing your own personal fear. You don't have to break all those physical fears that I say before, jumping from a plane or, I don't know, flying on a fighter jet or swim with shark. The reason people feel great after they do that because they overcome something physical. But I tell you what, I met many of those people that didn't change. They didn't. And so many kids, teenagers, are like roller coaster. They're going on a roller coaster and they're going around and they feel like they're facing the death. They're facing the fear. And when they get out of it, they feel a little bit better about themselves. It's not enough. It can be a starter, but it's not enough. You gotta find something about your personality that you're not ready to do. For example, you want to go ahead and build your own business. Most people will rather work for others and don't like their job just for the sake, just for the sake that they don't have to deal with their fear. My dear friend, we believe. I believe that we have two engines. We have the engine of logic and the engine of emotions. The engine of emotion is way more stronger. The engine of logic is safe, but it's very, very weak. So the idea, the idea that uh, 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 we need to change is to start winning and overcoming fear, which is, emotions, 
with emotions. We cure emotions with emotion. We can cure emotions issue with logic. Because if you just cure it with logic, it will be safe for a moment, for a two. But later on, it will be terrible. So to go ahead and making sure that we are truly fixing ourselves, change fear into happiness, change fear into passion, change fear into excitement, change emotion to a different emotion, replace emotion to emotion. Don't change emotion to a logic because logic will keep you safe. And that's why, unfortunately, people don't love. People try to find all kind of type of thing to do, just not opening the heart and stop being a leader. There is leader that lead people from the brain. There is leader who lead people from their emotion. The one that try to lead people from the brain will always try to find out if something makes sense. And once it doesn't make sense, they will feel like a failure, which they are not. Feeling, it doesn't have to make sense all the time. Feeling needs to be felt. If you have a customer, try to imagine yourself walking into a store. There is five salespeople, huge store, okay? And walking in, you want to buy a suit, shirt, shoes. You have one salesperson come to you with a smile, happiness, that's feeling. Ask you, how are you? That's very much secure and opening his heart is not afraid of you. And ask you if he can help you. And you said, reject him. You don't want to do anything with him. He come after you. If there is anything I can do, that's my name. Don't be shy to call me. I will be there for you. And just to let you know, the jacket right there, it's something that today is the last day that will be on that price. He just continue. He doesn't get hurt. He doesn't get insecure. He is brave to talk to you while you already rejected him 100%. Are you willing to do that? You know, if you're not willing to do that, why would you expect people to follow you? Why would you expect people to follow somebody who's not even opened his heart? Why would you expect somebody to follow somebody who has nothing inside? There's, everything is in his brain. Of course you can cheat the system and win with your brain. But you can never cheat the system. When I say system, I mean nature and try to win nature with your feeling. Feeling is the most beautiful thing God gave us. It's the most beautiful. Bravery comes from feeling, it doesn't come from logic. Because if you work from logic, bravery don't make any sense. Don't make any sense. And remember, most of the time the way we act is from a reactive motion. We shouldn't react to a situation. We're not truly building a situation. We don't have a plan. We're doing everything random. You're hungry, you eat. You are uh, uh, lonely, you go to the bar to find somebody. We react to our moment, moment of lack, or moment of something not working. That's what we're doing. We are not truly go ahead and build the whole system that I step by step will build myself to be brave. Now, the point is what I want to tell you, that you will remember, I don't want to react to different type of, or I don't want to react to different reaction of other people. Because if I do that, what does that mean? It means that you're going very low level. Their consciousness is there to wake you up. What does that mean? I need to explain that. On a journey to open your own business, on a journey to open your own leadership through bravery, you will have to overcome different things. And it's not going to be easy. You will have to choose if the people that react to you, speak negative about you, are something that you will have to fight because you might think this is, will be brave to fight them. Or brave will be to ignore and build my own company. The Torah, five books of Moses write, it says, Lotitor velotikom. You shouldn't hold grudge or you shouldn't revenge. No revenge, not holding grudge. What does that mean? 
When you want to avenge somebody who hurt you, when you want to be react to somebody that attack you, what end up happening? What end up happening? You falling into this category that you react to their reaction. And at that moment, you no longer yourself. You lost control over who you are. And the purpose is, I have to be brave by not answering back. I have to be brave by not looking for revenge. I have to be brave to forgive. People who are capable to forgive, they're brave. Because somebody come home and find his wife or her husband with their best friend, what a terrible thing. What would be a brave thing to do? To move on with your life. Those people who cheat on you will never change. This is their problem. You can lead this insecure person for a better life and you shouldn't. Why will you waste your time? There's enough people out there that are looking for a person like you who is brave. If you stay in that relationship, which is bad environment, it will bring you down. Run away. If there is one advice I can give you, run away from what I call loser. But loser is not what people in the street call losers. Loser is people who don't try. Loser is not somebody who try and not making it. That's not a loser. That's a winner for me. Because he might lose the business, but he wants something about his personality. It's called bravery. Losers is somebody who's not doing nothing to change. Nothing. Expect all the result and do nothing about it. Today I went to the doctor. And always when I go to the doctor for a yearly checkup, you know, they draw the blood. You know, they do a different check. So I always like to joke around with everybody. So today they print something new. And there is those six or seven pages that you have to fill up. You're healthy, what you expect to do, you want to lose weight, you know, everything. So it's funny, the first page tell you, are you willing to do this, 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 that? Do you like this type of food? They tell you everything. And then they tell you, are you willing to make an effort to get the result that you just wrote in the first two pages? And I was like, why would you even ask of course, I want to make the effort to get there. Just tell me what to do and I will do it. The people who are not willing to make no effort to get the result, those people call loser. Now, if you look at this video right now, and you look inside of you, and you feel that you are not willing to make any effort to make a change in your life, you're allowed to call yourself a loser. You can even take the lipstick, put the L on your mirror, and remove that L into W once you try. You don't have to win, just try. Once you try, that L will become W, which means a winner. That's how you shift from loser to a winner. Yesterday, I was uh, giving a class for about 30 business people. They invite me to, to, to lecture there. Uh, I, don't, I don't wanna call it motivation, but I want to uh, call it more finding how you think. That's what I was teaching them last night. So I was giving different examples about business and how to think. And one of the gentlemen sitting to my left, he said, Eliyahu, your examples are wonderful. But I want this example to relate to people more like me that are normal, which is most of us, he said. They don't have money. We don't have relationship. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't. And we want to make it. Where do we start? That's most people, he said. And I said, thank you. It's a great, great point. Because I can motivate a group and talk to them about rich people that I teach and famous. I mean nothing. What about most of us? Most of us who don't have that connection, we don't know, even know where to start. i tell you where to start. Would you ever thought in your mind to do something with your life? According to spirituality, we have two angels on your, on your shoulders. Positive angel, negative angel. The positive angel 
is motivate you to do good thing. His voice is not so motivated, and his voice is very low. You can hardly hear it. When he speaks to you and you can hear him, and you wait between 3 to 10 seconds, it's always between 3 seconds to 10 seconds, remember. 3 to 10 seconds. After 10 seconds, the voice of the good side will disappear. The negative angel lasts a little bit longer and it's more loud and more convincing. And it will try at least for a minute to get you out of that excitement of bravery. When I hear his question, I said, what did you overcome in your life? So well, I don't have enough money. And I said, no, no, I don't want to hear what you have or what you don't have. What did you overcome? What type of a bravery, what type of behavior did you change to get to a better place? If you don't change anything, then when this angel on the right side will talk to me and say to me, Eliyahu, it's time to go clean your car. Just I'm giving just a simple thing. If I wait 10 seconds, maybe I will clean the car in two months. That waiting time is a lack of bravery. It's a practical, simple system. You want to talk to someone about business? You wait 10 seconds, it's gone. You're nervous about it, then write it down on paper and do it. I want you to fail on the way to do it. You rather fail on the way to do it than don't even try. What happens when you don't try to do something, there is a shell start building around you. The Kabbalists call that shell klipa, shell surrounding you, not allowing your mind to think on its own. You become nothing more than a machine. You are no longer have your own thought. You become machine. You have schedule, you wake up in the morning, you pay your bills, you make some money, you go on your computer, you go on the internet, you build your website. Machine! Nothing but machine. No free will. Your free will has been taken away from you. But if you break through something, you beg to become human. That is being created in the image of God. That's what you are. So I look at the person to my left. I said, would you ask the same question if you will be rich? Or you're only asking it because you don't have a relationship and you don't have money. It takes some bravery to talk to a person like that. I did. Why? Because I believe that that's the way I help him to wake up. On the way out from the lecture, I finished at 10.30 at night. I came over to him and said, I'm sorry if I hurt your feeling. Please forgive me. He said, no, you didn't hurt my feeling. You woke me up. Thank you. I looked at him. I said, you are a winner. And you are brave. You are a powerful person. And you're going to do just great. My dear friend, bravery is to try. Bravery is not to make it. Let God do it for you. You know, there is a, an essay in a Mishnah. Mishnah is a book that was written 2,000 years ago. It says, It's not up to you to finish the job God said to the people, but you're not also free to get rid of your responsibility. What a beautiful verse. Meaning that it's up to you to do everything that you do, do it. You know, you do the best and God will take care of the rest. Don't worry about the angel and God. Don't worry. Let them do their job. But you, to become brave, to become a winner, to become a leader, you have to do. You have to do something. You have to jump into the lake. You know, there is a movie, I think, with uh, Tom Hanks, Castaway, when he had to make a decision, which is based on true story. Uh, he was working for FedEx, if I'm not mistaken. He's stuck in the island. There is a moment he has to make a decision if he's going back to the ocean. What's in the ocean? Nothing. Does he have a boat? No. 
He's like long time on that island. He gets used to comfortability. But he's alone. He has food. He starts talking to himself. He talks to a, a, a volleyball. He calls him Wilson. Interesting concept. Are you going to go into the water and make a change? Now, what's the chance that you're going to die? 50%. What's the chance you're going to make it? 50%. Both of them have 50%. Question of bravery as a leader now is different than the question of bravery as an individual. Because if you go to the ocean just for yourself, you're missing it. But if you're going to the ocean for others, that's a leader. So everything that we heard about Moses, David, Judith, Yael, Esther, the queen, those women, those men were able to get into a place that they lead because of the bravery. You can't just be brave and don't lead. If you just be brave and don't lead anything, you just broke something. Very nice, you broke a record. You, 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 you went to swim with a white shark while there is a blood around you. Once you get out of it, bravo. And there is many stars like that. After me, Debbie will talk about different people in the, in the, in the last uh, 20 years who actually did amazing things. They did amazing things, but not everybody is there as a leader. Being a leader is meaning that because of your bravery, people follow you. Because of your bravery, people's life change. Because of your bravery, things start to become better in the universe. This is what makes you brave. Remember that. Please remember that. You are changing your business. You are changing your relationship, your health. Everything about your life can be changed while, only while you overcome something that you are afraid right now to overcome. Now, that's include confrontation with people. That's include by going to a meeting with a meeting that might be wrong. You know, I remember in one of the businesses that I, uh, I had a chance, uh, it's a contract that I had with a large company, and I had to tell them what's wrong with the company. So that was confrontation. That was like bravery of confrontation but I can lose my job. So I remember the first meeting, I went to them and I said to them, how many workers you got? She said, well, we have 220 uh, workers for a long time and we have another 200 people who work half time. So it's about, let's say 500, if we put everybody together, it's about 500 people. I said to them, is any of those workers like you? So of course they like me. I pay them, I take care of them, I do everything. So let me tell you something. As your business advisor, as a coach, none of those people even like you. They got start screaming at me, yelling at me for two hours. And I'm like smiling. After two hours, they know me for a long time. I say, okay, Liao, usually you don't just speak. What's going on? I say, well, I have information to tell you. Nobody likes you. They're afraid of you. They're afraid of you. You're hiring people who are scared of you. And they do the job. Your business is not breaking through. It's just going down. Look at the graph. You're losing money. You're losing people. Yes, you made a lot of money in the last 28 years. But you're not going to make money in the future. Because you are not doing it correctly. You're not drawing inspiration into your business. And what you got to do is to stop being afraid and be brave. Be brave to confront situations. To tell. It doesn't mean to be rude. You have to look at the fear that you have. And go ahead and overcome it. And I hope I'm clear on that. If you want to open a, a, a new place, go open a new place. I just opened with my lovely wife, our organization. That's a brave move to go ahead and do it. With no one dollar down from nothing. To start step by step to go up there. That's not the easy thing to do. That's a brave thing to do. That's a brave of my wife to join me. She will speak in a second. It's brave of me to agree to do that. All of those things, it can be crazy. Or it can be an act of braveness. I want to wish you well, and we're going to meet again for the fourth class. But in the next half an hour, what Debbie's going to do, she will share a personal example because she's one of the bravest leaders I ever met in my life. I mean, uh, every doctor that she meet, without telling you the first story, just telling you our kids is a miracle. And she went to hospital as doing it for me as a husband, for them as children. She didn't do it for herself. So that's what a brave leader looked like. A brave leader got to do something very dangerous so everybody else 
will be able to benefit. But it doesn't mean the, the leader will die, what we call take a bullet. We're not taking a bullet because one bullet will kill you. Second bullet, what are we going to do then? You don't exist. So the idea of, Debbie will explain also from a modern point of view, few women leaders of the world that actually changing the world by taking charge over their transformation. Thank you. Please welcome Debbie. Hi everyone. So I am continuing now to talk about bravery. Eliyahu just gave a lecture about bravery. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the difference between leadership and bravery. Leadership means that you're using bravery as a tool to make a difference. Because a person can be brave. I can tell you there's someone called Felix Baumgartner. I'm sure you've heard of him. He did something brave. In my eyes, it's a little crazy. What did he do? He jumped from a helium-filled balloon at 128,100 feet, reaching the speed of 833 miles per hour while he was going down. Now that's brave, right? It's a little crazy too, but that's not a leader. I mean, how many people are gonna go out and follow him and do that? I don't think that's a great idea to do that. So what does it mean to be brave and who really were the bravest people in the 21st century? Nelson Mandela. That's true bravery. That's a leader. That's someone who said, you know what? I'm going to make a difference. I'm going to change the world. He was fighting for freedom for his people. That's bravery. There's a girl, and I'm sure you've heard of her. Her name is Malala. She stood up for women and children's rights. She started when she was 12. She started her activism. That's somebody who's a leader. She wrote, how dare the Taliban take away my basic right to education. She wrote, she, uh, she fought for women's and children's rights to have education. That's bravery. Now, Eliyahu had mentioned that I had gone through some things in my life. So again, because this is part of learning how to be a leader, remember, bravery is a tool. And there is no leader in the world that isn't brave. If you don't have bravery, now bravery doesn't mean I'm gonna go to war. Bravery doesn't mean I'm gonna get a bullet for someone take a bullet from, for someone. Bravery doesn't mean I'm gonna go and do something that I'm gonna put my life in danger. Bravery means I'm going to do something because I want to change the world and I will do whatever it takes. That's being brave. Bravery means I maybe don't wanna do it, I'm afraid of doing it, but I know that if I don't do it, it's not gonna change the world. It's not gonna change my world. Now, even as women, why do we need to be brave? Because if if we want to raise children who are going to make a difference, if we want to raise leaders, we need to show them what a leader is. You can't talk to a child and say you need to be a leader and then be stuck in your fears of making mistakes. What is the thing that keeps us from, making, from being brave or being a leader? Is fear of making mistakes. The fear paralyzes us. So what's bravery? Okay, so I'll tell you. My children, are all emergency C-sections. They were all born in the third trimester. I had a million things that happened to me. I had preeclampsia and toxemia. And, and every time I went to the hospital, I had two of my boys here in, in UCLA, the nurses thought I was crazy. But I said, you know what? These children need to come to the world, so I'm going to make it happen. Now, was I scared? Absolutely. But I went through the fear and I took on bravery so that I could be a leader, so that I could help other women who might have this fear, who might have these situations. And I remember probably around, I don't know, four years ago, five years ago, there was a lady in Mexico who was going through something very, very, very similar. And she came to me and she talked to me and she said, you know what, I'm going to be brave. And she became a leader in her family. She became a leader in her surroundings because now I think she's even having her second baby. And yes, she's going through her fears, but she's being brave. So who else? I wanted to share with you some other people. There's a woman here by the name of Ioanni Sanchez. She was a journalist, and she was not allowed to work openly as a journalist, but she persisted. She was uh, in Cuba, and she did it through the internet. She uses her blog to communicate with people. She uses her internet, and she speaks out about economic frustration. 
She speaks out about the politics in Cuba. She speaks out in her blog about different things to awaken people's consciousness to change the world, to change themselves, to change people around them. So again, when you think about people, you know, I was Googling people who are brave in the 21st century. When you think about a person who's brave, there's a difference between being brave to break your fears, like jumping from a helium air balloon, and I still want to jump from a plane, I've said it a million times, but that's not going to change anybody's world. That's nice. It's nice for you personally. A leader is someone who breaks their fears, who uses bravery to change other people, to help other people overcome their fears. There is a woman called Benazir Bhutto. She, is, she was the 11th Prime Minister of Pakistan, and she was the first woman to head a Muslim state. Can you imagine how brave you have to be to head a Muslim state as a woman? And during her leadership, she ended military dictatorship in her country and she fought for women's rights. She unfortunately was assassinated in 2007, but she said democracy is the best revenge. What does that mean? We need to be brave, we need to be outspoken. We need to share our, our um, bravery with people. So bravery can come in all shapes and forms. You can be a woman at home with your children and tell them stories of all the things you did wrong. That's brave. And that's a leader because you're showing them that it's okay to make mistakes. A brave leader is someone who doesn't care about making mistakes. If you're going on the right path and you have the right decisions in your mind and you make a mistake, it's okay. But if you're going from fear and you're watching what everybody thinks about you and what they say and how they look and what are you doing, that's not being brave. And that's definitely not being a leader. So the difference in leadership and bravery, bravery is a tool to get to leadership. Now, let's say women now fight for women's rights, and I had a very interesting conversation with somebody. You know, everyone's women's rights and we want to be equal. Why in the world would you want to be equal? Women have so many things they can do. You can be so much better than a man. Why would you want to be equal? That's not bravery. Show leadership, go out there. I was just reading an article about someone um, saying that someone didn't want to talk about their political uh, decisions on the internet and they were being forced to. And someone said, you know what? To be a leader doesn't necessarily mean you have to talk about it. Do something. Show the difference. Usually the leaders in our communities are the people who are quiet. They don't need to defend themselves. They don't need to get into a conversation and prove they're right. They just lead. They lead by example. And those are the people, look in your life. People who lead by example, people who aren't afraid, those are true leaders. A true leader isn't someone who gets up and now motivates everybody and gets everybody happy and helps everybody and then goes and is afraid to do something that he just talked about or she just talked about. A true leader is someone who says, let's do this and he does it and he shows you how to break your fear. Now. A lot of times, because we talk about spirituality, we think we have time to deal with our fears and to overcome our fear. Who cares? People are waiting outside for you to be a leader. I know somebody who has healing powers, and she went through a Theta healing course, and she really can help people, but she's so busy thinking, is this the right thing, and what should I do, and I'm not perfect at it. Who cares if you're perfect at it or not? You are a leader in what you do, do it. You're good at what you do, do it, don't be afraid, you learn on the way. Every single person in our life we can learn from. A true leader is not afraid to learn new things. A true leader will sit down with somebody and say, okay, tell me what's wrong. Because if all day you're looking for what's good, for what's right, you'll never get better. A true leader says, okay, I want to know all the complaints. I want to know what's wrong. And from there you can grow, from there you can make changes. From your mistakes, you can get better. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. Don't be afraid of making mistakes. If your goal is to be a leader, if your goal is to change the world, if your goal is to help people, start. How do you teach a child to swim? You throw them in the water. How do you become a leader? You start. You start by breaking your fears because nobody has time to deal with your fears. 
There's so many things going out in the world, going around in the world now, so much negativity. To add to it doesn't help. To be a leader in any way you know how to be a leader, do it. And don't be afraid of people telling you what's wrong because it's inside. Being a leader, being a true leader and leadership is something internal. It's not something that you walk around with a flag saying, hi, I'm the leader, follow the leader. You know, or you have a note like they used to put on people's backs in high school. No, a leader is something internal. A leader is something that people feel. Most of the time, even now, when you finish hearing this video, most of the time people don't remember what we say. They remember the energy they feel from us. So the leadership energy is internal. The leadership energy is inside of us. That's what we need to work on. We need to work on our bravery, but the bravery is not the goal. The bravery is the means to the goal and the bravery is to get to the leadership. How do you work on bravery? You sit down with yourself and you be true to yourself. What are my fears? Where do I want to go? Am I willing to give up my fears to get to this place? That's a leader because a lot of us have bad habits. A lot of us have things that we do every day and each and every one of us has bravery inside of us. Each and every one of us, if we're, you know, if it's, we're put on the line, if it's, you know, zero time and we have to save our child or we have to save something or we have something that we need to do now, otherwise it's going to be a mess. We do it. Most of us just go into robotic mode and we do it. What does that mean? We have the bravery inside of us. But if you stop for a split second and you let yourself doubt, you've given up on the bravery. I was listening to something this morning and they were saying everyone has, has motivation to change things. Everyone has good ideas. But what happens? You're sitting in a meeting, a great idea pops up, you're about to say it, and then you stop. That stopping is what's stopping your bravery. That stopping is what stops you from going forward, is what stops you from saying, I can make a change. When we get dressed in the morning, we don't stop to think for an hour what we're going to wear. We take whatever we want, especially men. Men don't have to think a lot. They put on their pants, put on their shirt, go out. That's how we need to think about bravery. That's how we need to think about the next thing that we want to do. Just go and do it. Let's talk about someone else. Um, Stephen Hawking. Stephen Hawking is the world's foremost authority on physics, theoretical physics and cosmology. I think everybody knows his story. He was diagnosed with ALS at age 21 and he was confined to a wheelchair and a, a computerized voice system for almost all his life. But even with these limitations, he continued his work and he made a difference. What was the result? 12 honorary degrees and awards and like commander of the Order of the British Empire from the United Kingdom and he had many, many awards but he made a change in the world. He made his mark in the world. Was he afraid? I can't believe he wasn't afraid. I can't believe he wasn't tired a lot of the times diagnosed with this terrible, terrible um, disease. But he was brave. When you're brave, you've gotten to a place where you have nothing to lose. When you're brave and you say, you know what, I'm going to do it, it's not even I have nothing to lose, it's what am I doing to gain what I want? Most people say, you know what, I have nothing to lose. But what about everything you have to gain? Everything you have to gain is so much more important than what you don't have to lose. So these people that I was sharing with you, if it's Malala, the, the, um, the girl who went against the Taliban and, and making sure that women and children are able to be educated in, in uh, Pakistan, it's so important to understand this girl was 12, so it doesn't matter how old you are, it doesn't matter what sex you are, men, women, children. Bravery is about what am I going to do to make a difference? It's a tool for me to become a leader. Bravery, you know, um, my son went for a uh, driver's lessons, a driver's test the other day, and he failed. He didn't even get out of the parking lot. The poor kid failed inside the parking lot. And he said to me, you know what? I have to do it again. Is that bravery? Yes, it's bravery on his level for him. Or he goes and he does the videos that he does on Facebook to talk to teens about what he's going through. That's brave. 
How many teens want to share what they're going through in their life? A person who is an open book, a person who knows their faults, a person who isn't afraid of saying, I made a mistake, is a brave person. So you don't have to jump from a plane. You don't even have to be an activist. You just have to say, I'm not afraid of making mistakes. And the, what I have to lose is much smaller than what I have to gain. If we always look at what we have to gain, at the difference we can make, at when we do something, you know how, have you ever seen athletes when they're running and they win the, the, um, the race? They keep on going from the adrenaline. That's the feeling that you'll have when you break your fears and you become brave. That bravery will give you adrenaline to help you become a leader. Leaders aren't, I know that people say leaders are born, but you know what? It doesn't happen overnight. Yes, a lot of people have that inner leadership. They walk into a room, they've walked into a room since they were little and they demand the attention and it happens. But you can learn how to be a leader. You can change it in your life today. You have to find what is your driving desire in life. What drives you? What's the emotion that drives you? Is it fear? Is it bravery? Is it love? What is it? Because if your driving desire, if your driving emotion is fear, what does that mean? A lot of us think about bringing money at the end of the day, of paying the bills, of you know, making sure our children have food, of just, meeting, just making ends meet. You know that, that saying, I just want to make ends meet. Everything we do then is from fear. That's not brave and that's not being a leader. We had a dear friend whose son passed away this week and his brother at the funeral said, you know, I never really was close to my brother because I was too afraid. I was too afraid of the answers. I was too afraid of the truth. So I didn't want to ask the questions. And he goes on and he says, you know, I want to share this all with you because we shouldn't be driven in life by our fears. We shouldn't let fears take control of us because then we'll miss out on everything. When a person is brave and you let that bravery control you and that you let that bravery push you, you overcome all your fears. You don't even have time to think about your fears because you're so busy being brave. You're so busy actually doing things and making a difference that that's what's going to push you to become a leader. So it's so important to understand for men, for women, for children, and me as a woman, we're brave if we can get up in the morning and we can share with our children and we can laugh and we can be silly. And that's on a small, small level. Be silly. Go home to your teenagers and be silly. You'll be amazed at the results you get. That's being a leader. If you're afraid to share with your children things you did because you don't want them to do it, it's from fear. Be brave. Tell them, you know what? And I'm not saying you should do this, but if you have a teenager at home and they're, you know, they're open to obviously all the alcohol and all the drugs and everything, for the fun of it, say to them, you know what, if you want to do something, do it with me. You'll see the reaction you get from them. They'll be so amazed and then they won't have that, that, um, that feeling that they have to do it. They don't have to prove that they're human. Proving that you're human with your children makes you brave, makes you a leader. Show them that you're, you're human. Show people your, your mistakes. It's okay. Learn from everybody. Everybody in your life can teach you something. And when you walk into a room and you say, okay, I'm going to be brave now. Go and do the things that are maybe hard for you to do. The confrontations, the saying hello, the starting the conversations, the caring about another person outside of our family. It's not comfortable. I know people who've lived next to their next door neighbors for 15 years and they don't know anything about them. When you build your own little cocoon and your own little life with your own little community, you're closing yourself. Be brave. Open yourself up. Let people into your house. You know, there's a book that Eliyahu is writing and there's a chapter about when you let people into your home, when you let people into your family, into your surroundings, you're being brave. Why? Because that's it. This is who I am. This is what I have and I'm not going to hide anything. Leaders, true leaders have nothing to hide. 
True brave people are brave people who are doing something for the world. True braveness is to say, okay, I have this thing that I can do. I have something stopping me, but I'm going to go forward because I'm going to help other people. I'm going to set an example. That crazy braveness of jumping from an airplane, that's great. And maybe you could do that to help you get to the other step of bravery. But that's just to break your fears. It's not for people outside. It's for you. And that's okay. But it's for you. So bravery is so important in order to get to leadership. All of these classes are about leadership. All of these classes is to learn how to become a leader in your life and, and help other people and affect other people. So the first step in bravery is getting rid of your fears, is saying, what are the fears that are holding me back? What are the things that I can get rid of right now? And it can take a split second. It's a decision. It's like the flip of a switch. It's a decision. I'm going to be brave and I'm going to set an example. I'm going to do this for other people so that they won't have to do it. That's being a leader. So all these people, this 12-year-old girl, this journalist in Cuba, Nelson Mandela, Stephen Hawking, these people all had a challenge. All of them. All of them had a good reason to be afraid. But their goal, their passion, their, uh, their will to make a difference in the world and to leave their mark was much bigger than their fears, was much bigger than the things ALS, much bigger than the things that were keeping themselves constricted from other things. Now, I'm not saying that Felix Baumgartner is not an amazing person. He is. And he did something that I probably wouldn't do, even though I've been saying that I want to jump from an airplane for a long time. But I probably wouldn't do it. And that's great. Use that energy. Use that braveness to help you do true things of bravery, true things that will lead you to become a leader. So. The bravery is a tool. The bravery comes from breaking our fears. It comes from understanding that we have so many gifts that the Creator gave us. So many. And there are things that come to us without even thinking about it, like this. And then all those stupid little things that stop us from doing them are the things that bother us, are the things that keep us away from being the true leader we are. It's so important to understand you have steps. And those steps can be done in a second. They can be done in years. It's up to you. Knowing what your fears are, breaking those fears. While you're breaking your, those fears, you're becoming braver. And then with that bravery, you become a leader. You can't become a leader without being brave. Every person in their life who is a leader has done something in their life that they had to be brave about. They had some kind of challenge. Eliyahu and I, where when we started from nothing, we decided that we were going to take that step with three teenagers, and we said, you know what? We're going to do it. It took bravery. Were we afraid? Absolutely. But we broke those fears because we knew we could make a difference. So I hope that this class on bravery will help you to understand. And again, I can go through the steps again. Sit down with yourself. What are your fears? Be true to yourself. What's pushing me? Am I afraid? Am I afraid I won't have enough money? Am I afraid I won't be able to teach my children? Am I afraid I won't be a good enough mother, good enough father, good enough friend? What's stopping me? What's holding me back? And what am I willing to get rid of to get to that amazing place of being a leader? The bravery is the car that you get into to get to the leadership. So you have your fears, you have leadership, and you have a car that you get into that's called bravery, and that's what's going to take you there. So take all of your in, inside bravery, all of that internal bravery that's there already. You don't have to go shopping for it. You don't have to buy it. it. Nobody can give it to you. You take it. You take that bravery that's inside of you, and you build yourself up. And you start with the people in your house. You start with the people that's hard for you to confront. You start with, you know, if you're someone that doesn't like to go out there and be noticed, go out there, be noticed. Do things that you know will break your fear, but eventually will make you a leader in your life.